Yo, what's going on guys? Today's video is going to be part two of the Witch Summons to Sunstone. We'll be looking at tier two here. If you have not watched the previous video where we looked at tier one, it will be linked down in the description below. Also, I've done another video on which weapons to use thy musket bars on. Something you may want to give a look as well if it's something you may need. Now with this video, one thing I would like to mention is that if a summon is not in this video or in tier one, that means it will be in a lower tier. And generally I will be explaining my reasonings on that in said video. But feel free to comment if you have any questions as to why it's not in tier one or two as I know some people are a little bit impatient to get that answer. Another thing is if you want to like the video, subscribe and do all that YouTube jazz, it'd be much appreciated. And with that, let's get into the video. Now we're starting this video. We are going to be going into another six way tie. This is between the Primarchs. Now, one thing I have to preference with the Primarchs is that if you hit damage cap, then your value for the Primark does skyrocket up to tier one. If you're not hitting damage cap, then it's not something you should prioritize because the only point of stoning any of these is to increase the damage cap of which you should be hitting. Now, a lot of them are not gonna really change their, their call effects as their only match limit break. So upon match limit break in most of these, you do not get any change in their call effect meaning that only value you gain is the sub aura which does get a bump from five percent to ten percent which is a big bump especially when it comes to mvp racing therefore this is only something you should be looking at if you are trying to get a leg up on the competition and have to get a better slot in mvp do know that these summons do work in all content unlike the arc room summons that only work on element these summons work everywhere so bahamut high level null raids it doesn't really matter they work everywhere making them very universal even though some of their call effects are not the greatest like Raphael call effect it's kind of not that great but it's still very good to set a sub aura so just keep that in mind when you're thinking about stoning these summons now we're going to be moving over to two summer units first we'll be looking at summer makula and summer rose queen first we'll be looking at summer mackie now summer mackie is extremely good for anyone doing the kango builds very commonly used with vajra and Greya. outside of these combinations it's not used too oftenly though it's also sometimes used with summer kaliostro so it really depends if you want to really invest sunstones into this. Do know that this is actually premium limited as it's only appearing during summertime. So it's kind of hard to acquire, much more harder than let's say primal, um, though you can actually spark it. So it, I guess it kind of evens it out where like you can spark these if you want to go after them. Now I don't really recommend going balls deep into summing uh using sunstones on this but if you really want to min max your water builds uh, for leviathan and varuna this is a really good way to get a leg up on a competition do know that it's not used for one turn really it's more used for longer raids where you can get a couple turns and call the summon if you're not able to call it then it really doesn't do anything so that's one thing about this summon now the next one we're looking at is Summer Rose Queen, and this is pretty much a going to be a core for Guild Wars for Wind. It's also good for both Primal and Magna, so both can get tons of value out of it. We probably will be getting a Wind GW in the upcoming months. It's been a little bit of a while since the last Wind GW, so maybe in about uh, five, five to six months, maybe. So I would look or I would look out on this if you plan on getting a high ranking in Guild Wars. It's a good investment for burst comps that revolve around Neo, which is very common with Shiva. So if you're looking to get a little edge on people with wind, this is definitely gonna be the summon that makes 
what's the difference between the normal win player and somebody who's a little bit more invested. One thing I will mention though, it's not that great in high level raids. Uh, it's okay, in, but it can be dispelled, so it does hurt it quite a bit. Another thing I would like to mention is that uh, the call effect is not good for one turn builds. Um, you will most likely want to run Freyer, so if you're looking for a one turn build, it's probably not that great for for one turn, so just keep that in mind if you're going to Sunstone the summon. So next we have Devil, and Devil is the next Arc Realm summon in this lineup as I feel it's still a very good summon, not nearly as good as the ones that boost damage, but what makes this summon really unique is that it does apply debuffs. So I feel like the quality of life that you do gain with running the summon, as it allows you to sometimes either free up a slot on your main character, or to change one of your characters that you would have normally brought in order to cap the fence down, you no longer need to bring them, which is a big quality of life change that you could bring a more DPS oriented unit. So it's really good, even in high level raids like Ultimate Bahamut high level and Fa high level, while the attack and defense down does not work anymore, it's still really good in those raids as it does give all allies a health boost on fire. And fire is one of the harder elements to get a good healer for right now. Um, that's not like extremely hard to get, that's the invoker. She's a good healer, but she's hard to get because not everyone has evil lights and stuff like that. So having the health boost does help a little bit with fire. So I do feel that it's a good summon. It's not good enough to be tier one yet. So maybe in the future something may change, but right now I feel like it's a solid tier two if you want the quality of life change as it does help a little bit for fire. Not to mention it's also used in a couple of builds known as the Devil Shiva Grid. I personally don't recommend people going after this grid, but if it's another option for people who really want to avoid running the standard Magna Comp, so it does have value there if you're looking to build that grid. With that, let's get on to the next one. Now we are on to the more controversial part of the video. Here we all have two summons that are surprise ticketable. One being Bonito, the other being Typhon. First, we'll start with Bonito. Now, the reason that Bonito did not make it into tier one is that the build that you need for Bonito is a very specific build. One revolving around either Greya, Vajra, or Ogi based characters such like that. Sandifon is another one, the summer version, uh, the summer variant. Ophelia uh, is another one. Characters like these are not characters that every player has access to. If you're going to be running something like Altair and and Catalina, maybe um, it's not going to nearly work as well, especially if your pool build is something like Leviathan Daggers. Um, it does not work nearly as well as it would work on a proper Ogi built for Bonito. Not to mention that you do need summons, water summons in your summon pool. So I would recommend people who are going to invest in the Bonito do go out there and farm it. Even Leviathan four star is a good summon to put in your summon pool just so you can get the stats from it. As if you are to run all SR water summons, it does hurt your overall damage output. Now back to the surprise ticketable, surprise ticketable point of this video. Now with Bonito, it's a big quality of life upgrade. It's huge. The difference between having Bonito and not having it, it's massive in terms of events, anything like a, a Magnus, anything that you're able to kill rather quickly, even doing your ultimate Bahamut trains, it's a big leap in terms of quality of life. But it's surprise ticketable. So as a player, you have to take time and wonder how much of a rush are you in to get your Bonito completely done? Do you have Badra and Greya? Do you have them? Do you have the pool ready? If you are in that area, so using Sunstones on Bonito is not a bad idea, but do know that 
in the long term, in the long run, you are kind of hurting yourself because sunstones are not easy to get. Personally, I will recommend take time and surprise to get Ponytail. If you have good characters, right, and you don't mind losing a couple of surprise tickets to a summon, I would surprise to get Ponytail. Maybe you, you're gonna spark, right? Um, Ponytail is a normal gotcha summon, so it's not generally too hard to get them. But, you know, if you're gonna just roll a lot, then you may just roll into bony toes and then you can merge them. I don't recommend sunstoning it as a priority option. Just something that let's, let's for example say that you're one to two off from getting your bony toe full limit break. Maybe there, I personally myself use sunstone on bony toe and it was, it was worth it, I, I will say, it was worth it. But sunstones are hard to get and the longer we play the game, there's going to be more summons that you would need to get from the gotcha that you can't get easily like bony toe where you can surprise to get it. So I just want to stress this point when talking about these surprise ticketable summons, even though they're extremely good, just know that they are surprise ticketable. So when you're stoning them, it's going to hurt in the long term, I believe. Next one we're talking about is Typhon. Typhon is extremely good at the high levels of the game. We're talking about you ultimate Bahamut high level, Fa high level. In these raids, Typhon is crucial. It's almost, I would even say core for Fa high level and really slow runs or mediocre runs. It's a good get out of jail free card when you're stuck. That being said, it's still usable at zero star. It, you do not gain the 100% charge bar to all allies, but even at zero star, it still has the ability to be able to remove all charge diamonds. So as a player, I'll recommend surprise ticketing this, probably over sunstoning it. But if you're more of a, I have a huge ego, it's one sunstone, it's perfectly fine into this. I would not invest three sunstones into either a bony toe or Typhon. I'm gonna tell you flat out, don't invest three sunstones. It's not worth it. But one to two, that's okay, I believe. Um, generally one, two is like pushing it if like you're in a rush, like right before Guild Wars for Bony Toe. Okay, two is okay. But um, generally I recommend it as a one sunstone if you need one to full limit break it. That's my opinion on it. Tell me how you guys feel about it. I know these are a little bit going to be controversial because they are surprise ticketable. And it's something that I have to stress out with people that surprise ticketing it is the best way to go. While it not, may not be the fastest way, it's something that you should definitely be looking at as a player. But tell me how you guys feel about it. I'm going to thank you guys for watching. If you guys want to leave a like, all the YouTube stuff, leave a like, subscribe, blah, 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 stuff and things youtube stuff thank you guys for watching thank you guys for uh supporting these videos and i'll see you guys next time goodbye